uh, there's a uh, boom, a bubble in real estate going on right now along all of coastal China. Uh, am I correct there? Yes, the, the Chinese have responded to this crisis. Um, their exports to the U.S. dropped, and that meant their whole export-led growth model slammed into a brick wall. And so they responded with an extraordinary shock and awe policy response involving a, a fiscal stimulus package of 13% of GDP. But on wow. top of that, they instructed their banks, or allowed their to banks, lending? to increase lending by oh. the equivalent of 27% of GDP. So these th two things together, 27 plus 13 is 40 percent of GDP in stimulus. Now, wow. to be fair, there's an overlap between the two, but we're talking about really a stimulus package of 30 percent of GDP. So China's That's much bigger than the United States just did. Much, That's much huge. bigger, three times larger. And that has created an a extraordinary boom in China that has spilled over into the rest of the world. But the problem with stimulus is it's like Red Bull. Uh, it stimulates you for a while and then it and fades. Then, you crash, yeah. then you either have to drink two cans of Red Bull or go home and get sick. But either way, sooner or later, you get sick. Yeah. So the Chinese economy is a the is the only real bubble left. Since the Industrial Revolution began, every bubble pops, and China won't be an exception. Their finance minister and a bunch of other people are are now calling uh, the country to rein the banks to rein in the amount of loans. And, uh, and trying to raise interest rates to get this bubble under control. Well, what that does is, it, it, as we've seen with Alan Greenspan's bubbles, it pricks the bubble, and, and that's when the bubble bursts. And I think that you're going to see the markets start to crash in the United States. All the markets are going in lockstep fashion now. When the United States goes down, ever since the year 2000, all markets on the planet are trading the same direction simultaneously. and. Uh, as our markets roll over and start going down, I think you're going to see a series of bubbles popping all over the planet. The world economy is trying to deflate and get rid of the excesses that the credit bubble has created. And we've got this fiat currency system where we're battling the natural forces of deflation now. You'd agree to that, right? If market forces were allowed to work, the global economy would go back into equilibrium mm -hmm. at a very much lower lower level of output and employment. So unemployment would sh shoot up in this country to 20 percent instead of 10 percent. It's only the government spe deficit spending this year, the budget deficit is going to be 11 percent of GDP. Without that, the economy would have contracted, would contract by more than 11 percent this year. We would be back into a Great Depression. So it's only this government stimulus now that's keeping us out of depression. The real question is, is how long can the government continue having a multi-trillion dollar a year budget yeah. deficit? Do All governments, though, across the planet are trying to uh, um, stop their stimulus packages right now. <laughs> they think the problem is fixed and that its happy days are here again. And so they're ending their stimulus packages just as the markets are going to roll over and these bubbles are going to start, start popping. So that even magnifies the intensity of the crash and starts it sooner. And of course, um, the, the spending by the government itself and the borrowing from the future, uh -huh. uh, some of that is financed by the Fed creating money and some of it is financed by the Treasury just borrowing money that already exists. Right. But either, either way, the, tr but the Treasury that money that exists was future. borrowed into existence by the Treasury and then expanded by fractional reserve banking. Yes. And so there's interest due on every single dollar in existence. So every dollar in existence is a promise to tax you in the future or a promise by the banks that you're going to pay a whole bunch of interest on what you borrowed. And the currency to pay the interest doesn't exist yet. The um, state, federal, uh, local, uh, all the municipal bonds, when you add those up, I believe, and, and um, and corporate bonds and so on, money that's owed back, comes to over $57 trillion now. I can't, it was $57 trillion before I wrote my book, so three years ago. I'm sure it's like $65 trillion now. And uh, <clears throat> that's owed back from a currency supply that has $13 trillion in existence. <laughs> right. You can't pay off the, the, the debt uh, with this monetary system, so it always has to expand. 
It seems now that it's very difficult to distinguish between what is the difference between a dollar, a dollar bill, and dollar-denominated debt. Yeah, there isn't any difference because China holds that, all, most countries hold our debt as currency reserves, right. and they call them currency reserves, and they're not. Right. <laughs> it's a right. bunch of IOUs that we actually have to pay the principal and interest to them in the future with dollars. Right. It's interesting, the Congressional Budget Office projects the next 10 years expenditures and revenues from the government and the budget deficits. And they show the, the item for not only the budget deficit every year, but also the interest expense that is expected to be paid on these deficits that out for the next 10 years. And of course, the amount of interest expense is, uh, is going to more than double over the next Next, next and their projections years. are usually based on the most rosy scenario where interest rates don't change. That's right. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and we know that it's wrong. If you go back and look at the government's record of predicting the future, they are incredibly wrong all the time. Yes. So, and these scenarios that they've got, the most rosy scenarios, are disastrous, right? Right. Yes, that's right. Uh, over the, they're now projecting that there will be roughly ten trillion dollars worth of budget deficits over the next ten years so ten trillion a uh, trillion and dollar deficit picture. a year yeah. and that would we would be lucky to escape with that yeah I have a feeling it's going to be like fifteen or twenty uh, I don't think you know last year they were expecting the budget deficit for this year to be smaller right and in your book you show uh, some of the projections uh, and I believe those numbers probably came from 2008 financial statement or whatever, so it's projecting, or maybe 2009. They change them every six months the, or so. The 2010 uh, budget deficit was supposed to be far smaller than 2009, and already they've upped that to being much larger than 2009. That's right. And, you know, well, I've got a different definition. 1.6 trillion. Uh, 1.6 yeah. trillion this year. I have a different uh, definition of uh, deficit than the government has because they use a smoke and mirrors accounting. Would you agree with me when I say that the true deficit is actually the change in national debt, how much more you owe than you owed at the beginning of the year? That's, yes, I would agree okay. with that. Okay. Well, then it's going to be well over, it'll be like a 2.4 or 3 trillion, somewhere in that range, deficit this year. It was, um, I believe the 1.4 trillion was last year, right? That's right. When you look at the change in national debt, I've, I've got the charts uh, with me, but I think it was like 1.75 trillion or 2.2 trillion was the change in national debt versus the smoke and mirrors lie that they're doing, the, right. this accounting that is, and all you got to do is look at the change in national debt and you know how much they're lying to us, and they're lying to us by a huge percentage. And when you project that out into the future, the, I, I, what I did is I went back and looked at the percentage of lie, the change in national debt, versus the official change in national debt. And uh, I, I do it with the zero line, a balanced budget, um, and debt being down and, and uh, uh, surplus being up. So these lines come down. And then you put the change in national debt, and the lines are way down here. Um, when I go back like one year and then project that error rate one year into the future, and then go back two years and project that error rate, the uh, final year of George Bush, the uh, change in national debt was about twice uh, the reported deficit. So they're lying by like 100%. <laughs> so um, <clears throat> Richard has some good ideas for the government uh, as far as how to solve this. I don't think we could, the, the politicians will implement anything. These are smart ideas. And uh, politicians aren't smart. They're going to cater to what people want. And throughout all of the emergencies that are coming up, you're going to see a bunch of bailouts, and they're going to uh, create a whole bunch of currency and do deficit spending uh, just to bail people out. And it's going to add up to disastrous consequences. There's no paper currency that has ever survived when, a, a, when it becomes fiat, when, it, when it's no longer backed. And 
This time it's no different, except this time it's all the world's currencies at once. If the dollar has a crisis, the world has a crisis. It's about 72% of the world's currency is U.S. dollars. After a, in January this year, the, the Supreme Court ruled in a five to four decision that corporations can now give as much money as they want in election campaigns. I think this was disastrous. It,